Bestbookbits.com presents The Go-Giver, a little story about a powerful business idea. The Go-Giver tells the story of an ambitious young man named Joe who yearns for success. Joe is a true go-getter, though sometimes he feels as if the harder and faster he works, the further away his goals seem to be. And so one day, desperate to land a key sale at the end of the bad quarter, he seeks advice from the enigmatic Pinder, a legendary consultant referred to by as many devotees simply as the chairman. Over the next week, Pinder introduces Joe to a series of go-givers, a restaurateur, a CEO, a financial advisor, a real estate broker, and the connector, who brought them all together. Pinder's friends share with Joe the five laws of stratospheric success and teach him how to open himself up to the power of giving. Joe learns that changing his focus from getting to giving, putting others' interests first, and continually adding value to their lives ultimately leads to unexpected returns. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The Go-Giver. The Five Laws of Stratospheric Success. Number one, the law of value. Your true worth is determined by how much you give in value, then you take in payment. Number two, the law of compensation. Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. Number three, the law of influence. Your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. And number four, the law of authenticity. The most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And number five, the law of receptivity. The key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Chapter two, the secret. You get what you expect. What you focus on is what you get. Ultimately, the world treats you more or less the way you expect to be treated. Chapter 3, The Law of Value. A very useful thing to remember, appearances can be deceiving. Everyone likes to be appreciated. People will do business with and refer business to people they know, like, and trust. But a great restaurant uh, a great restaurant strives to defy imagination. Its goal is to provide a high quality of food and service than any amount of money could possibly pay for. First law, your true worth is determined by how much you give in value than you take in payment. The point isn't to have them pay you more, it's to give them more. You give, give, give. Why? Because you love to. It's not a strategy, it's a way of life. And when you do, then very, very profitable things begin to happen. All great fortune in the world has been created by men and women who had a great passion for what they were giving, their product, service, or idea, than for what they were getting. And many of those great fortunes have been squandered by others who had a great passion for what they were getting, then what they were giving. Chapter 5, The Law of Compensation. The first law determines how valuable you are. In other words, your potential income, how much you could earn. But it's the second law that determines how much you actually do earn. Second law, your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. Or to put it another way, your compensation is directly proportional to how many lives you touch. And there are two amazing things about this. First, it means that you get to determine your level of compensation. It's under your control. If you want more success, find a way to serve more people. It's that simple. It also means that there are no limitations on what you can earn, because you can always find more people to serve. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. once said, Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Another way to say that might be, Everybody can be successful because anybody can give. Chapter 6, Serving Coffee. Sometimes you feel foolish, even look foolish, but you do the thing anyway. Chapter 7, Rachel. There are three universal reasons for working. Survive, to meet your basic living needs. Save, to go beyond your basic needs and expand your life. And serve, to make a contribution to the world around you. Chapter 8, The Law of Influence. Now, by a network, I don't necessarily mean your customers or clients. I mean a network of people who know you, like you, and trust you. They might never buy a thing from you, but they've always got you in their backs of their minds. They're people who are personally invested in seeing you succeed. You see, and of course, that's because you're the same way about them. They're your army of personal walking ambassadors. When you've got your own army of personal walking ambassadors, you'll have referrals coming your way faster than you can handle them. Stop keeping score. Watch out for the other guy. Watch out for his interest. Watch his back. Forget about 50-50, son. 50-50 is a losing proposition. The only winning proposition is 100%. Make your win about the other person. Go after what he wants. Forget win-win. Focus on the other person's win. 
Third rule, your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. Because if you place the other person's interest first, your interest will always be taken care of. Always. Some people call it enlightened self-interest. Watch out for what the other people need with the faith that when you do, you'll get what you need. They love to give. That's why they're attractive. Givers attract. Chapter 10, The Law of Authenticity. These lessons don't apply only to business, Joe. A genuinely sound business principle will apply anywhere in life, in your friendships, in your marriage, anywhere. That's the true bottom line. Not whether it simply improves your financial balance sheet, but whether it improves your life's balance sheet. I care more about my wife's happiness than I do about my own. I learned something that day. When I said that my life as a mum, wife, and a household manager left me with nothing the marketplace wanted, I was wrong. There was something else I learned over the years, and that was how to be a friend, how to care, how to make other people feel good about themselves, and that, my friends, is something the marketplace wants very much, always has, always will. What I'm here to sell you on is you. People, remember this. No matter what your training, no matter what your skills, no matter what area you're in, you are the most important commodity. The most valuable gift you have to offer is you. Reaching any goal you set takes 10% scientific knowledge or technical skill. 10% max. The other 90% is people skills. And what's the foundation of all people skills? Liking people, caring about people, or helpful. But they're not the core of it. The core of it is who you are. It starts with you. It's worth 10,000 times more than all closing techniques that have ever been or ever will be invented. It's called authenticity. The fourth law, the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. Chapter 11, Gus. You just love what you do. You love talking with people, asking them questions, learning all about them, finding ways you can help with them, serve them, fill a need, share a resource. Chapter 12, The Law of Receptivity. It's better to give than to receive, right? If you're a good person, that's what you do. You give. Good people give and don't think of receiving. But you, you think about receiving all the time. You can't help it. Which means you're probably not really a very good person. So why bother trying? All this giving stuff sounds great for some people. For people like me, maybe, or Nicole, or Ernesto. But not for you. It's just not who you are. It's not better to give than to receive. It's insane to try to give and not receive. Try not to receive is not only foolish, it's arrogant. When someone gives you a gift, what gives you the right to refuse it? To deny their right to give. Receiving is the natural result of giving. Every giving can help only because it is also a receiving. All the giving in the world won't bring success, won't create the results you want, unless you also make yourself willing and able to receive in like measure. Because if you don't like receive, you're refusing the gifts of others and you shut down the flow. Because human beings are born with appetite. Nothing is more naturally geared toward being receptive than a baby. And if the secret of staying young, vibrant, and vital throughout life is to hang on to those most precious characteristics we all have as children, but which get drummed out of us, like having big dreams, being curious, and believing in yourself, then one of those characteristics is being open to receiving, being hungry to receive, being ravenous to receive. So the secret to success is to gaining it, to having it, is to give, give, give. The secret to getting is giving. And the secret to giving is making yourself open to receiving. What do you call this law? The fifth law. The key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. Chapter 13, Full Circle. You can't measure your success by whether or not you get the account. That's not the point. The point is not what you do, not what you accomplish. It's who you are. And that's a wrap on the book summary of The Go-Giver. Check out our YouTube channel with over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. Like the video, subscribe, share, and if there's a book you want us to do a summary on, comment below. Also, check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you'll find 500 written and audio book summaries. And if you want to join our weekly newsletter for all the latest book summaries, use the link below and pop in your email address. Download Mixcloud.com where you can listen to the podcast of over 500 audiobook summaries or check out the website Mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits. Follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and giving. Go out there and give and receive. Take care. Bye-bye now.